We have another amazing collection that I picked up recently. Um, there are some huge silver keys, some slabs. Hold on, you're gonna wanna see this. Up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. It's collection time. I am picking up, I made a deal. Um, I had looked at the collection, negotiated a price. Uh, they came down, I went up a little bit and uh, we made a deal and I have some absolute bangers in this collection. Um, I have three graded books that you're gonna wanna see and a bunch of raws, a lot of low grade stuff, but a lot of really good stuff. So um, you're gonna wanna look at this, especially if you're coming to King Con 2. Hey there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. If you like the content on this channel and you like to see um, what we have going on here, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, and let me know about uh, what you think about this collection. So I, um, I've been getting contacted like regularly, it seems, by a local antique dealer, um, and uh, he finds collections as part of, um, you know, homes he goes into, and then we kind of make a deal for, for some of the stuff, and he's been getting some really good stuff lately. I don't like to disclose how much I paid for it. Um, I don't think that does any of the parties any good. I mean, obviously, I understand if you're curious about it, but that's really not the way I feel comfortable operating. Um, but I did pay up for this because... Any time you're dealing with collections, you know, you deal with somebody else, they're, they're going to want to make their profit. That being said, um, I paid below fair market value, but not well below fair market value. And I got some good stuff. And if you're anywhere in the uh, tri-state, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area, um, even like Delaware, get on out on March 19th to King Con 2 in Iceland, New Jersey. It's a show, a comic book show that's by the community, for the community, and a lot of people who have YouTube channels and Instagram, Very Gary, Erod, the Pressable Defects are going to be there, Three Men in a Basement, Street Side Anthony is going to be setting up. There's going to be um, tons of great vendors and just a, a great time talking and buying and selling comic books. So I'm going to be um, selling for the first time there, and a lot of these books will be coming with me because I don't think it, it's really worth the time for me to, you know, try to get them graded and wait like a year for them to go to CGC. So um, I, I looked at the books. I crunched the numbers. They had a price in mind. I had a price in mind. And uh, we settled on a price. So the collection has quite a bit of Silver Age books, some bronze uh, just it was two short boxes when I put everything together. Um, here's some early Hulk, uh, early Bronze Hulk, some silver Iron Mans. Um, okay, these were my boxes. I brought a Tales of Suspense. Well, that's a nice book. Not in great shape. There was actually one here. And, and there's several of these books that were returns. Trade dress missing. There's the first Modoc. There's the first High Evolutionary. That's some good stuff. I'll, I'll go through all the keys, or most of the keys, um, when I break this down. So let's uh, see what I pull out. So let's take a look. There were a few bronze keys. This was a more of a Silver Age, low grade collection, um, but a lot of keys in there uh, and some good runs too. So if you saw, you know, just going through a lot of Iron Man, Avengers, some Fantastic Four, some, some good stuff, Thor, Marvel almost in exclusively. There were just a handful of DC books. So some of these two are um, spec books. This is Hulk 228, the first appearance of Moonstone. She's a key character in the Thunderbolts. So whether or not they're putting together a Dark Avengers team, a Thunderbolts team, she could be there at some point. If she's in the MCU, this is... Obviously good book to have. I have several copies of this at this point. Um, another were, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, where's the cosmic? Um, this is the last iteration we know with this Guardians of the Galaxy. We don't know if James Gunn is going to continue or not, or if he's going to continue with a new team. Um, and cosmic characters, Hulk 234, the first appearance of Quasar. 
He had formerly been Marvel Boy back in the 50s. So that's those are kind of spec books. And those are in better condition than most of the rest of the thing. Obviously, the condition is very age-dependent in this collection. Um, it was funny. They had Amazing Adventures 1. Um, and they had five, but not six, which would be the first Mockingbird. So uh, they, there was a, a large run of Avengers. But you can see here. This is Avengers 14, not necessarily a key book, but an early Avengers book with the original team. Um, but there's a chunk missing out of the cover. That is a theme we're going to see a little bit in some of these books. There were a good number of Avengers books. The biggest ones, you know, double-digit ones weren't there. But uh, this is a book, he's coming back, Red Guardian, Avengers 43. We've seen David Harbour play him in Black Widow. We, I think the character is going to return in some form. That's a pretty cool book to have. We saw just a little sneak peek of this guy in the WandaVision show. Um, 52, the first appearance of the Grim Reaper, who is the half-brother of Wonder Man, Simon Williams. And um, the uh, there's a connection, obviously, between um, Grim Reaper and the Vision. These actually are in decent, I think, mid-grade condition. I do have to take a closer look at them. Avengers 53, the first team-up or first uh, battle, be, uh, Avengers versus X-Men. Um, a lot of people are speculating on this book because it would make sense that at some point, once you bring mutants into the MCU, you can have an Avengers X-Men uh, movie. Here's a book that I picked up a copy of recently, and uh, this is decent grade. Um, it's 62, the first appearance of M'Baku. We've seen Winston Duke play him several times in Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame. He's going to be in the new Black Panther movie. Will he inherit the mantle of the Black Panther? Uh, the, the issues in terms of getting filming done with Letitia Wright that Marvel has had, they might be pivoting away from that storyline, and a lot of people are speculating on M'Baku. I think it's still a pretty good, good book to have. Um, issue number 70 of the Avengers, the Squadron Sinister, who become also the Squadron Supreme. Um, basically, this is a knockoff, homage, satire, um, copy of DC. You had Hyperion, who is super-powered from another planet that was destroyed. You have Dr. Spectrum, who has, like, light powers. Dr. Spectrum here. Uh, Wizard, who... Um, Runs really fast, and uh, Nighthawk, who's a rich guy that fights crime. Uh, I would pay to see Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Ryan Reynolds, and who knows? I mean, get somebody for Flash, right? Um, you get if the show's over, get Gustin or get uh, John Wesley Ship. That would be fun to have in the MCU. I don't know if we're gonna see that. This is a book that um, oh, is getting a lot of. Um, Lovely, because it, it's a double key. It's Avengers 71. It is the first appearance of the Invaders. Uh, the World War II era, Captain America, Submariner, and the original Human Torch. And it's also when the uh, Black Knight joins the team. Or is it Black Panther joins the team? I think it's Black Panther joins the team, right? Um, and so I picked this book up at King Con, speaking of King Con last time. So I'm... Kind of cool to have another copy of this in the collection. This is a good book. This one it has a subscription crease in it. It's uh, Avengers 87, The Origin of Black Panther. Black Panther books are hot. And my, I've said this before on the channel. Here's my theory on T'Challa. The, um, we know Chadwick Boseman is gone. And Marvel has said they're not going to recast him. But, my belief is that there are enough young kids, of all races actually, who became fans of that character through the movies. And they're going to be lifelong fans of Black Panther. So like some 10-year-old kid that fell in love with the Black Panther movie, in 15 or 20 years, they're, gonna, they're still going to be a Black Panther fan. Uh, there's probably more Black Panther fans in... Um, people under the age of 20 or 25 than there are of people who read the books when they originally came out just because of the immense cultural impact that character had and that impact is going to stay there.
we all kind of fall in love with those characters we, we watched and fell in love with as kids. You know, some people it's the, uh, you know, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. For some people it's the X-Men animated series. For me, it's Adam West Batman. And that, that doesn't go away, ever. Okay? Uh, some other cool Silver Age books. Daredevil uh, 37. This classic Doctor Doom cover. Um, so that's, that's a book I've seen uh, trending in some places. Captain Marvel, number one. We saw uh, Annette Bening play the female version of this character in the movies. I, I don't think we're going to see Marvel himself again, but uh, this is, you know, number one, it's a cool book to have. This is in low grade. Journey into Mystery 89, which is the origin of Thor. Still, as they say, low grade is better than no grade. Not a book that you come upon every day. So this kind of like collection had a lot of stuff like that. This um, mid-grade, lower mid-grade, has some creases on the cover. This is a book that a lot of people are looking at lately. has made some hot lists. It's uh, Tales of Suspense, uh, number 94, the first appearance of Modoc. So that was a cool book. And this was one of the books that, like, the, um, the uh, antique store that I bought from had some books set aside. We'll get to those books. Those are the books that everybody knows. They didn't know that book. They didn't know this book. It's got a big sub-crease. I actually have a couple of copies of this already. Thor 134, first appearance of the High Evolutionary. That character has been cast in Guardians of the Galaxy. We're going to see him, so this is a cool book to have. Um, I don't think that character is going to last too much longer. He could appear again in other areas, but I think um, kind of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be uh, the big thing for him. This, it's a low-grade book. Iron Man number one. It's a great book. It's one of those, what are the, it's one of the um, six books that uh, basically when Marvel was able to get their own distribution and increase the number of monthly titles, we got this and Captain America 100. We got Submariner number one, a Hulk series, Doctor Strange, and Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So all those books came out at about the same time. This did have a nice run of Silver Surfer. Um, issue number 14, the crossover with Spider-Man. That is a, a sought-after book. This is, again, mid-grade. Uh, you know, some spine stress, some you know wear on the cover, but it looks pretty good otherwise. Again, I, I haven't really had the opportunity to look through these two carefully. Um, and then, and these are lower grade. It does have Silver Surfer number one. And again, this is a huge book, even in low grade. Um, I do have one copy of this. Um... This is in much worse shape than that, but um, I'll take a look through it. It's got tape on the on the spine here. These first handful of issues, I'm not sure the first six issues or eight issues of Silver Surfer, were all square bound 25 cent books, um, 48 pages, and the spines tend to split very easily on these older square bound books. In addition to that, this is a book that's been up and down, on and off over the last year. <laughs> Silver Surfer number three, first appearance of Mephisto. Similarly, tape on the spine, lower grade book. Okay. And if you have one and three, you also want four. Right? This classic John Bushima cover with Silver Surfer and Thor. Um, it does have, I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but when I looked at the spine, I haven't opened this up yet. I'm a little afraid to, but you can actually see the pages. The spine is kind of in tatters. Um, so again, low grade, but this is still a nice book to have. This will, you know, I'll be bringing to the show. Um, this book is in really rough shape. It's missing part of the cover, but it's a single digit issue of Fantastic Four. Um, this may be a 0.5, you know, it's got writing on the cover and uh, it's, it's intact. I, I did check this one. The, um, the top, well, <laughs> the cover doesn't even exist at the bottom staple. I believe it's still attached to the top staple. There's some tape there. Centerfold is solid. All the pages are there. The only thing that's missing is this thing. Another Fantastic Four book in similar condition, and it really is a shame because it's missing part of the cover. It's uh, number, what is this, number 23, which has a classic Doctor Doom cover, but Doctor Doom is missing. Um, so low-grade book again. Um, another one, uh, there, were, there were a good number of Fantastic Four books here. Again, you know, no, no near mints. Um, number 41, not really a key issue, but a nice early Fantastic Four. No 48, but there was a 49. Again, maybe somebody didn't like the thing and just tore them out of the cover. 
um, that, you know, this whole bottom piece is missing, which is a shame. The rest of the book is intact. And actually, this book, other than this, is in nice shape. But that's a big deal. Uh, and then there was 50. 50 is a worn, well-loved copy. But this is the third issue of the trifecta with um, Silver Surfer and Galactus. So uh, that's a nice book to have. I do have all of the, all three of those books from another collection I got out at CGC. I picked up a huge collection in the fall um, that had a, a, like runs of everything. It had Fantastic Four. I think it was 44 to like 209 or something. Like every issue, uh, including 40, 48, 48, 49, 50, 52, 53, 66, 67, and so on. It also had large runs of Incredible Hulk. And when I was looking through the original collection, the, the big book that was there, the, the, the book that actually I paid for and, and got everything else free, was a Hulk 181 in pretty nice shape. Um, it had The collection had 182, but it didn't have 180. I was able to pick up a copy of 180. Again, this is low grade. It's got this terrible water stain on the top that uh, caused discoloration in the trade dress. But... Marvel value stamp is intact. So um, other, other than that, I mean, it did have water damage. You know, that's, that's what it is on this book. Um, it's a lower grade book, but for a collector that wants to fill in a Hulk run, a Wolverine run, Wolverine's right there on the last page, ready to go. And actually the water damage doesn't get to the bottom half of the book, so his panel's fine. Then the um, collection also had three slabs. So they were kind of different from the rest of the collection because the title that these slabs came from, there was only one other issue, and that was like like 18 years after these, these books. So there's Spider-Man number four, the first appearance of the Sandman in a 3.5. So that's, um, you know, that's a key book. You know, single-digit Spider-Man books. You don't, you know find those in the wild too often. Um, so this is a slabbed copy. Let's continue to count down. Number three, in a 2.5, first appearance of Dr. Octopus. Uh, that's one of the, the big Spider-Man keys. Um, it does have some schmutz I have to get off the, uh, the slab itself, but um, these seem to have been slabbed fairly recently. It's got uh, kind of a newer CGC casing, but um, you know this is uh, this is an awesome book to, to have. So obviously, it's easy for someone to price out slabbed books, much easier than raw books because they're graded already for you. And then this one, the um, the, the guys I bought it from told me that the owner, his daughter, dropped it, <laughs> and it's uh, an Amazing Spider-Man number two. In a 3.0, first appearance of the Vulture. And you see right there, up above the N in Amazing Spider-Man, there's a little spider web there. So I'm going to have to get this reholdered, and God knows how long that will take. So that's the collection, a pretty awesome collection. I, um, you know, the three slabs kind of were the centerpiece, but there's a lot of good value, and there's a lot of Again, mid-grade filler books for some titles. A lot of Thor, um, Silver Age stuff. Uh, good number of Avengers, Fantastic Four. So that's good stuff to have. Uh, again, there was only one other Spider-Man book, and it was like issue 211 or something. It was like way chronologically different than 2, 3, and 4. So that's... I, I don't know if this was the entire collection or not. I think it was. But... Um, you know, I'm getting it secondhand, so I'm not completely sure. So a lot of these books are going to be at the Bronzeville Comics booth at King Con 2. So if you can get there, it's a $5 admission charge. The community's going to be there. The defects the other night, we're talking about the portals opening up at all of the, uh, everybody in the, uh, community in this area of the country coming out. Uh, it should be a ton of fun. Uh, even if, uh, even if you don't buy any books, just to go out there and interact with everybody, uh, talk comics, there's going to be stuff to find no matter what you're looking for. If you're looking for big books, you're looking for filler issues, you're looking for, um, kind of bargain stuff. It's all there. 
So let me know what you think about this collection. I've been going crazy buying collections lately. And I kind of have to tighten the belt now, put them all in order, get everything priced and ready. And that is a task that I am, that's a little bit daunting because it took me a, a while because I'm very, I'm very fastidious about things to go through this 2000 book collection I had gotten. I'm going through another collection and I have like three that I picked up in the last couple of weeks. Fortunately, the slabs are the slabs, so I just have to price them. Um, but I do have to get this reholdered. So I think I kind of have to make the decision with the slabs. Are they CPR cases or I just want to bring them and, and have them for sale at the show? That's it. I'm, I'm excited about getting this collection. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, my goal, one of my goals for 2022, if you saw that video was more buying, more selling, less buying. I'm not there yet. So that's what March will be for, um, doing some selling and uh, moving, moving some books around. So in the meantime, I'm pretty excited to have all this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Check out a couple other videos here. I'm stacking up these videos during the Winter Olympics just to, to get everything um, kind of ready. And I guess I'll probably do that as the show progresses. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Comment, like, subscribe. And this is Jim saying until next time, Enjoy your comics.